Good morning, students. How are you all? As you know, we had already completed down our six chapters of social studies. So today we are here to start up our seventh chapter. And the name of that seventh chapter is our rights and our duties. As we all are the citizens of India and we are living in the country India, definitely. So each and every citizen who is living in this particular country has got some rights, and along with that rights, he has some duties as well. So in this chapter, we are going to understand what is constitution because both rights and duties are already written in the constitution, and we just have to check out each right and duty from our constitution. So definitely, in this chapter, we are going to understand the constitution of India. Along with that, we are going to understand the fundamental rights and the duties, and at last, we will discuss that what is directive principles of state. policy okay so moving further just look at this picture what you understand from this picture one boy is doing work and he is just dreaming to go to school as a child is dreaming of going to school so definitely it is her his right na so what you see in the above picture you have to discuss it with your parents and in your live classes as well that we are going to conduct of the 7th class 7th uh, chapter have you seen something similar around you do you think this is right so definitely whenever we have a live session we will discuss it we will definitely hear your opinion regarding this picture so till then you will discuss it with your parents okay moving further now we are going to start up our chapter so definitely the rights and duties each and everything is being written in the constitution so firstly we want to understand what is constitution so definitely what is constitution a constitution is a set of document which lay down the basic principle that a state or a country is governed by so each and everything which is going on in our country or which is practiced in our country is written in our constitution okay so we have to check out each and everything from our constitution with the even if i talk about our president our prime minister they too have to follow the constitution because each and everything is written in the constitution and every citizen who is going to go on the, uh, who is going to rule the country or who is living in this particular country has to follow the constitution okay so as we had already discussed the role of leaders even as well written in the constitution but when does our constitution when did our constitution came into force so we adopted our constitution as a constitution assembly completed the constitution assembly was formed to make the constitution and it took near about 2 years 11 months and 18 days to complete down the constitution how many time it took down it took 2 years 11 months and 18 days to form our constitution and finally it completed down on 26 november 1949 and definitely it came into effect on 26 january 1950 if you remember what is there uh, on 26 january you all are remember about republic day na so we celebrated republic day just because be, uh, on that particular day we adopted a constitution and constitution main motto is saying that to be republic each and every citizen is being uh, properly doing their or accepting their freedom so if i talk about the longest written definitely the constitution is in written form so if i talk about which is the longest written constitution or which country has the longest written constitution so definitely india's constitu constitution is the longest written constitution sabse lamba constitution kiska hai hamare india ka so we have a longest written constitution so everything which is going on in our country is written in the constitution and if i talk about someone does not follow the constitution so what happened with that person he has to 
face the punishment and that punishment is mainly be given by the different courts and the supreme court or supreme court is considered as a highest court and after that there is a high court and after that there is a local court or we can able to say the district court okay so each and every person has to follow the constitution the whatsoever is written in the constitution is the last thing and we have to follow that so now moving further we are going to understand what are fundamental rights and duties as the name of chapter related with the rights and duties so rights what are right a right is something that the citizen of country has like i am a citizen of country i have a right to equality i am equal before everyone i am not like i no one can discriminate me on the any of the basis like on the basis of color on the basis of gender i am equal as the other person who are living in the country as well so definitely there are mainly six fundamental rights given in our constitution which each and every citizen is enjoying the first right is depicting the right to equality the second one is right to freedom the third one is representing the right to freedom of religion fourth one right against exploitation fifth one representing cultural and educational right the sixth one is representing right to constitutional remedies okay so definitely the law is considered as a supreme supreme means the highest that is the reason no? the supreme court is considered as a highest so the meaning of supreme is very high or very superior okay so the law is considered as a supreme one so we are going to discuss down these fundamental rights in detail in this chapter so moving further the first fundamental right is definitely the right to equality so right to equality mainly focus on like i am poor you are rich but still i am equal to you you are not able to discriminate with me just because i am poor so if any person discriminate with any other person he has to face the punishment a richer has no authority to discriminate with the poorer one man and women rich or poor religion discrimination like i am belonging from a punjabi family you are belonging from a Hin uh, hindus family so you are not able to discriminate with me before law i am equal with you and whatsoever opportunity you have it means the same opportunity i have to as well to enjoy those okay so no discrimination is acceptable because everyone who is living in this society is equal before law as you can able to see this picture so what does this picture represent look at the picture how are these related to the right to equality so this symbol is representing to the this symbol nyay it is representing to the nyay very good so the along with that you can able to see a person is on wheelchair along with that you can able to see a man and woman who is wearing a like sari and along with that you can able to see a punjabi family so they all are equal these three people the person who is on wheel and punjabi family and hindustani family is equal before the law because this symbol is representing to the law so each and every person is equal before law so moving further the second one is representing the right to freedom so right to freedom what is the meaning of right to freedom like i want to speak something so no one has the authority to prohibit me so i am completely free i have a freedom to express my thoughts i have a freedom to express my speech that is representing to the right to freedom so what is included in the right to freedom to form groups and association peacefully like i want to form my own group so i can able to do that no person prohibits me 
फॉर डूइंग दैट प्रोहिबिट मी रोक ना ओके सो द नो पर्सन हैज अथॉरिटी टू प्रोहिबिट मी सो मूविंग फर्दर द सेकेंड वन इज टू प्रैक्टिस एनी प्रोफेशन लाइक आई एम अ टीचर सो डेफिनेटली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी अ डॉक्टर दैट इज योर चॉइस आई एम नो वन टू स्टॉप यू फॉर डूइंग दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एन इंजीनियर दैट इज डेफिनेटली योर चॉइस यू आर कंप्लीटली फ्री यू हैड अ फ्रीडम टू चूज योर प्रोफेशन बाई योर सेल्फ एंड नो वन प्रोहिबिट्स यू फॉर डूइंग ऑल सच काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग्स टू मूव अबाउट फ्रीली इन इंडिया लाइक आई वॉन्ट टू गो आउट ऑफ द स्टेट आई वॉन्ट टू गो लाइक आई वी आर लिविंग इन पंजाब सो आई वॉन्ट टू मूव टू हरियाणा सो डेफिनेटली आई एम कंप्लीटली फ्री टू मूव देयर इवन आई इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सेटल देयर आई कैन एबल टू सेटल एज वेल नो वन कैन हैज द अथॉरिटी टू स्टॉप मी और टू प्रोहिबिट मी सो डेफिनेटली वी कैन एबल टू सेटल डाउन एट एनी पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया इट इज़ आर चॉइस वी हैव अ कंप्लीट फ्रीडम सो नो वन हैज़ द अथॉरिटी टू टेक अवे फ्रॉम अस दिस काइंड ऑफ राइट दैट इज इंक्लूडेड इन राइट टू फ्रीडम सो मूविंग फर्दर द थे इट इंक्लूडेड एज अ राइट टू एजुकेशन एज वेल सो नाउ वट इज़ राइट टू एजुकेशन राइट टू एजुकेशन मीन्स द वर्ल्ड इज क्लियर दैट एवरी चाइल्ड इज फ्री टू टेक द एजुकेशन सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन अ पर्टिकुलर एक्ट पास डाउन वट इज द नेम ऑफ एक्ट दैट पर्टिकुलर एक्ट राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट ओके राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट टू थाउजेंड नाइन सो वट इज इंक्लूडेड इन दिस एक्ट दैट द चाइल्ड हु इज ऑफ एज ग्रुप सिक्स टू फोर्टीन ईयर्स गेट फ्री एंड कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन इन द गवर्नमेंट स्कूल इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द चाइल्ड हु इज ऑफ सिक्स टू फोर्टीन ईयर्स हैज अ कंप्लीट अथॉरिटी टू टेक फ्री एंड कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन एंड नो स्कूल हैज अथॉरिटी टू डिनाई द एडमिशन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर child because it is the right of child to take down the education from a particular institution so is it clear to you moving further now we are going to discuss down about right against exploitation so what you are able to see in this picture a girl is working uh, at the home of other people so definitely she is looking very small or we can able to say that she is below the age of 14 years so definitely right against exploitation what it include the exploitation means कि हम किसी को एक्सप्लॉयट कर रहे हैं वी आर टेकिंग वर्क फ्रॉम पर्सन एंड डज नॉट गिव दैट प्रॉपर सैलरी एंड इवन द राइट अगेंस्ट एक्सप्लॉयटेशन ले डाउन दैट नो चाइल्ड बिलो द एज ऑफ फोर्टीन ईयर कैन बी मेड टू वर्क एंड इफ द चाइल्ड इज अंडर द फोर्टीन ईयर्स एंड वी आर टेकिंग वर्क फ्रॉम द चाइल्ड इट मीन्स वी आर टेकिंग द हर वी आर टेकिंग हिज और हर right that is right against exploitation and if he files complaint against us definitely before law it is illegal and we must get punish from the law we face down the punish from the law moving further the next one is right to freedom of religion so religion as you all are aware with the world religion hindu muslim sikh isai these are the religions now so what you came to understand from this right to freedom of religion means that each and every religion is acceptable each and every religion before law is same so no discrimination must be practiced as we all know that in india if i talk about it is not like na no, only one religion person is living there in india punjabis are living there muslims are living there even hindus are living there people from bengal most of the people are following the different kind of religion so definitely each and every religion is acceptable in a country so no discrimination must be practiced just because of 
religion moving further the next one is cultural and educational right so definitely each and every religion have their own culture the people have their own custom they have their own tradition they uh, celebrated different festival if i talk about the main festival of hindus are it we can able to say the families of punjabi that is of considered as a diwali or gurpurab so definitely the people who are belonging from any other part is definitely facing love the in main festival in maharashtra we considered a durga puja so definitely the different festivals are there people are speaking different languages in india even 22 official languages are there which is being acceptable are by our constitution there are 22 languages which is acceptable by our constitution so the cultural and educational right ensure that each and every citizen has the complete authority to protect their culture and no discrimination must be practiced on just because of their culture their tradition their festival and of their language whatsoever they want to speak they has the authority to speak it out with, with whatsoever language they want to choose it is their willingness it is their wish they has the complete authority to speak with that particular language okay so moving further the next one is representing to the right to constitutional remedies now right to constitutional remedies mean if any person fundamental right has been violated violated means that someone try to destroy them okay so violated representing that someone is doing such kind of an act so that their fundamental rights or go against any of the right is representing to the violation what is included in the right to constitutional remedies means if any person uh, fundamental rights have been violated violated mean that uh, someone denied and try to destroy a right so go against the law violated is actually representing that so he has to go to court and demand that right be restored and that person if go to court definitely the other person who is trying to get uh, out from the get the right from that person he has to face the punishment of court so what else is included here the right to constitutional remedy is definitely an important because without this right we are not able to enjoy the other right because this right is definitely protects the right up, up, um, other rights as well because this rights ensure that the right to freedom of religion right to cultural and educational right right against exploitation right to equality right to freedom each and every right must be practiced to each and every citizen that is being ensured under the right to constitutional remedies so as we had already discussed down the person has the constitutional rights as well the fundamental rights as well so whenever we found a rights we have along with that duties as well some if some relaxation is there it is our duty to as well some duties as well so what are those fundamental duties of any citizen to follow and obey the law is a prime duty of a citizen so what are the main fundamental duties the list of fundamental duties is already given in your book so we are going to check out the list from there the first one is representing to obey the constitution and respect the national flag and national anthem you all are aware with the word national flag definitely we have a tricolor flag and we all know about our national anthem because on the regular basis we do our national anthem in the morning assembly as well so it is our duty that whatsoever is written in the constitution we have to obey that and along with that we have to respect our national flag and our national anthem as well the second one is representing to follow non violence and maintain peace non violence means कि हम किसी के साथ बुरा ना करें कुछ भी वॉयलेंस वाला एक्ट ना क्रिएट करें सो वी हैव टू फॉलो सच काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी विच इज़ ओनली प्रैक्टिस टू मेंटेन द 
peace and if we are doing the activity which is creating destruction in the society or which is creating a destruction in the uh, country definitely that is punishable by the law and that is not accepted before the law the third one is representing to uphold and protect the sovereignty unity and integrity so what is the meaning of sovereignty sovereignty means to the complete power to govern a country and unity you all are aware unite feelingness we all are together feeling of togetherness is representing to the unity and the third one is integrity means to remain together not being divided so definitely we must protect the sovereignty integrity and unity of india we does not able to do such kind of activity which prohibit all three things so because it is included in our constitution so we have to follow it as well to promote harmony brotherhood among all the people harmony and brotherhood means harmony is representing a state of peaceful existence and brotherhood is representing understanding the people brotherhood word is clear, uh, derived from the word brother we have a friendly relation with our brother we try to understand our brother definitely so but this the constitution is saying that treat each and every citizen of india is like your brother is like your friend and try to cope up and try to understand them at the fuller extent and try to help them at the fuller extent it is our duty and we must do all such kind of a things because we are the citizen of india and if we are enjoying the right we have the duties as well so we have to take care of the duties as well so moving further the next one is representing to defend our country and render national services when required so what is the meaning of render especially in return from for something like our country give a lot of things to us if you heard army men they are on the border every time so what they are doing they are giving the national service so whenever they uh, the constitution said the country needed you so you have to came forward for the help of the country you have to came forward just to help the country or just to protect the country the another one is representing the value our rich history and heritage like we have a rich history historical monuments is there you can able to see in this picture no various kinds of monuments are there so we have a rich history or a very wonderful history we have to protect that and definitely along with that we have to protect our heritage as well the another one is representing to protect and improve our natural environment such as forest lake rivers and the wildlife we must not destroy our forest we must protect our forest we must protect our lakes rivers and wildlife because all such uh, without all such thing the survival is not possible in this earth we are not able to survive properly the another one is to safeguard public property and avoid violence it is not like that is public park or that is that that park is being maintained by the government so i am not going to take care of that such kind of practices is not acceptable before law it is your duty because that is public property and it is used by each and every person so it's your duty and even the duty of each and every citizen to safeguard the public uh, property and avoid violence avoid the uh, act like fighting okay so moving further the next one is to work towards achieving excellence in all sphere of life when a person tries to achieve excellence in all spheres of life or to try to do something for himself definitely he is doing something for the country as well because he has the name of a country from where he is belonging so whenever he is trying to do something in for his own excellence or for his own betterment definitely he is doing for the country as well so these are some duties as well along with our rights so what we had discussed down just revise revise it once we have six fundamental rights that we had discussed down the first is representing to the right to equality the second one is representing the right to freedom 
द थर्ड वन इज राइट अगेंस्ट एक्सप्लोइटेशन फोर्थ वन इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग राइट टू फ्रीडम ऑफ रिलीजन फिफ्थ इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग कल्चरल एंड एजुकेशनल राइट एंड सिक्स वन इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द राइट टू कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल रेमिडीज आफ्टर दैट वी केम टू नो अबाउट द डिफरेंट फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज वट इज इंक्लूडेड इन दोज फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज दैट वी हैव टू रिस्पेक्ट आर नेशनल फ्लैग वी हैज टू रिस्पेक्ट आर नेशनल एंथम वी हैव टू मेंटेन द पीस द फीलिंग ऑफ ब्रदरहुड सोवर्जिनिटी यूनिटी एंड इंटेग्रिटी अलॉन्ग विद दैट वेन एवर आर कंट्री नीडेड अस वी हैव टू केम फॉरवर्ड एंड अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी हैव टू प्रोटेक्ट आर इन्वायरमेंट आर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज अलॉन्ग विद दैट द प्रोटेक्ट section of our history and heritage is also a responsibility of a citizen further we came to know about the public property and we must not do any of the act which had has became hazard for the public property because it is very much difficult to maintain the public property as well so here is also given so each and everything which we had discussed down is written down in our constitution and do you know unite united kingdom does not have a written constitution they didn't even have their written constitution so whatsoever they are doing like in india we had a longer written constitution but the united kingdom does not even have a written constitution at all so moving further so the next type which is included in our constitution is a directive principle of state policy as we had discussed down about the rights and duties if the person is does not following or do, the duties and does not enjoying the rights the he or she has the complete authority to came to the court and do the complaint against the person who has taken down the right from him and definitely that is justiciable justiciable means ki aapko uske badle mein kya milega justice milega you will get the justice but if i talk about directive principle in our constitution there are directive principles as well so definitely uh, if i talk about the guidelines of the directive principle the guidelines which the government must keep in mind while making the the law in a way they define the duty of government towards the welfare of the citizen and some of the directive principles are like so it is kind of duties of government which is the duty of government is written in these kind of directive principle of state policy but the uh main thing about directive principles of state policy is that it is not justiciable no justice is properly meant on the directive principle of state policy so what are the main uh, duties of the government towards the welfare welfare means bhalai ke liye logo ki welfare of the citizen all citizen has to access adequate means of livelihood so definitely adequate means of livelihood means each and every citizen who is living in india must have their basic necessities whatsoever is required that you all are aware that food cloth and shelter all such kind of a things is included in the basic necessity so each and every citizen must have the adequate mean of livelihood so moving further prevent concentration of wealth in the hands of very few people definitely concentration of wealth means the maintenance of wealth wealth is related with the money so it is must be in very few hands if it goes to a large amount of people so it is very much difficult to Uh, handle that so moving further the next one is pay equal for equal work both men and women that doesn't matter that a person is particularly a man or a woman if he they both are doing equal work the equal salary must be given to both of them provide good working condition to the workers in industries and factory a wonderful working condition must be there it is not like a worker is working there so no security precautions was taken down there so a good working condition must be there in the industries and the factories as well organize village panchayat so it is the duty of the government as well to organize the village panchayat as we all know that this it is very difficult for the central government or for the state government as well to check out the activities which is going on in the villages as well so further they made a village panchayat and village panchayat check out the whole functioning of the village moving further have a uniform law code for all the citizens 
सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया सो डेफिनेटली यूनिफॉर्म यूनिफॉर्म मीन्स स्टेबल स्टेबल लॉ कोड मस्ट बी देयर फॉर ऑल द सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया एंड द नेक्स्ट वन इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग अ गुड रिलेशन विद अदर कंट्रीज एज वेल इफ वी डोंट हैव अ गुड रिलेशन विद अमेरिका वी डोंट हैव अ गुड रिलेशन विद एनी ऑफ द कंट्री ऑफ आर नेबरिंग कंट्री यू ऑल आर अवेयर विद आर नेबरिंग कंट्री सो वी आर इट इज़ वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर अस टू सर्वाइव इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो वी मस्ट हैव टू क्रिएट अ गुड रिलेशनशिप विद अदर कंट्रीज एंड अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी मस्ट हैव टू मेंटेन द पीस एज वेल सो डेफिनेटली दैन अदर वन इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द प्रमोट कोटेज इंडस्ट्रीज इन द रूरल एरिया डेफिनेटली इन द रूरल एरिया द वर्क आर पीपल फाउंड इज वेरी मच लेस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल आर लैंडलेस एंड दे आर फेसिंग अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम और इकोनॉमिक बर्डन सो वी मस्ट प्रमोट द कोटेज इंडस्ट्रीज इन द रूरल एरिया रूरल एरिया इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग टू द विलेज एरिया ओके सो मूविंग फर्दर प्रोटेक्ट मॉन्यूमेंट प्लेसेज एंड ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ हिस्टोरिकल इम्पॉर्टेंस सो यू कैन एबल टू सी इन दिस पिक्चर इट इज़ काइंड ऑफ मॉन्यूमेंट सो वी मस्ट द गवर्नमेंट मस्ट प्रोटेक्ट दोज मॉन्यूमेंट्स एंड प्लेसेज दैट हैज अ सम हिस्टोरिकल इम्पॉर्टेंस सम हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड इज डेफिनेटली कनेक्टेड विद लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच इज देयर इन आ country and we all are aware the foreigner came there or the tourist came there just to visit the beauty of our history after seeing these monuments by seeing this monuments so moving further the next one is representing raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living of people to improve the public health definitely when the standard of people rise down uh, standard of people start rising so definitely their living standard will also be improved the people start living in a better way prevent child abuse and exploitation of workers child labor is definitely avoided in our country or it is banned at all and definitely the government must check out no child abuse will be done on that and exploitation of worker means that a worker is doing more work and getting less wages so exploitation of worker is also be stopped down in the country it is all being checked under the directive principles of state policy okay so as we had already discussed down so in the right if the rights is violated we can demand that they may be restored but however it cannot be with the same of the directive principles of state policy so definitely hope uh, you are clear with the chapter we had already completed it down so what we had discussed down in the chapter as we started down to came to know about our constitution what is constitution when did we adopted our constitution when it is being completed down and when it came into the force definitely it came into effect into 26 january 1950 further we came to know about the six fundamental right and along with that we came to know about the fundamental duties as well at last we ended the chapter by reading down the directive principles of state policies so this is all about the chapter so you what you have to do you have to watch down the video carefully and after watching the video just read down the chapter from your book and after that you have to complete down the exercise which is given at the end of the book by yourself without the help of any other person